Welcome back to the course mechanics of solids. So, in the last lecture, if you recall, we are solving one problem. We started one problem and we could not solve uh, the whole problem in that particular lecture. However, we will we'll try to solve or try to complete that problem in this uh, lecture. So, there actually uh, we, we uh, discussed about the mechanical uh, stresses developed due to the mechanical uh, forces, right. I mean, the mechanical strain whatever is getting developed. So, because of that you are getting the development of the mechanical stress and that we have calculated. Uh, then we uh, started the calculation of our uh, thermal strain and there we just started this thing the geometric compatibility. So, geometric compatibility if you recall, so basically there you we, we talked about that delta y b t is equal to delta y s t, right. Delta y b t that means the, the deformation, okay. the deformation in bolt must be equal to the deformation or in the sleeve, because we are not expecting or we are not allowing any gap between the bolt and the sleeve the, the connection. Okay. So, therefore, both the things bolt as well as sleeve both the elements will be elongating by the same amount or if they are contracting they will be contracting by the same amount. So, therefore, the whole assembly will be I mean will be getting enlarged or getting contracted. Okay. So, this must be the geometric compatibility for that system under the temperature rise. Okay. So, therefore, because this and this is happening due to your the length of the sleeve as well as the length of the bolt both are same if you if you look back the problem whatever we defined in the last lecture. So, what we can write therefore, the strain in bolt due to the thermal that is the thermal strain in the bolt must be equal to the thermal strain in the sleeve. Okay. And already we have calculated these two things. So, we can put those values sigma y v t by 30 into 10 to the power 6 plus 5.12 into 10 to the power minus 4 equal to sigma y s t by 10 into 10 to the power 6 plus 9.64 into 10 to the power minus 4. Okay. So, from this we can get the equation sigma y b t minus 3 sigma y s t equal to 13.56 into 10 to the power 3 equation 3. Okay. So, this is coming purely based on geometric compatibility of the system under the thermal action. Okay. So, now from equilibrium already we have seen this thing earlier that will be remaining same from equilibrium your sigma y s t okay, multiplied by a s the cross sectional area of sleeve plus sigma y b t cross sectional area of bolt must be equal to 0, because there are no forces acting actually. Okay. So, this already we have seen in the last lecture. So, that will be remaining same even under temperature rise. So, that gives me 5 sigma y s t plus 4 sigma y b t is equal to 0. So, that is equation say 4. Now, if we solve equation solving equations 3 and 4, what we can get? We can get, I mean, if we solve, we will get either sigma, I mean, sigma y s t as equal to 3.2 
into 10 to the power 3 pound per inch square and sigma y b t is equal to 3.99 into 10 to the power 3 pound per inch square. Okay. So, you have got sigma y s t and sigma y b t, right. So, what we have got earlier we if you recall earlier we, we had got sigma y s and sigma uh, y b, right. That means, the stresses developed due to the mechanical strain. Now, we have got stresses developed due to the uh, thermal strain, right. So, therefore, if we add these uh, uh, stresses algebraically, we must get the total stress acting on the sleeve as well as on the bolt. Okay. So, let us do that, pretty simple. So, the total stress in bolt is equal to your sigma y b already calculated and now we have got sigma y b t. Okay. So, that gives me 3.849 into 10 to the power 4 pound per inch square, whereas total stress in sleeve is equal to sigma y s plus sigma y s t that is equal to minus 3.069 into 10 to the power minus 4. Ten to the power four, right? Ten to the power four pound per inch square. Okay, so you look at the total stress developed in the bolt that is tensile in nature. So therefore, bolt will be getting extended due to the application of the mechanical uh, strain as well as your thermal strain, whereas the sleeve will be under compression and this much of compressive stress will be getting developed due to the combined action of thermal strain and mechanical strain. Well, so uh, with this I will conclude the stress strain chapter, stress strain thermature, therm temperature relation okay? uh, and we have seen that how we can calculate the thermal strain and how we can find out the stresses developed due to the thermal strain. Well, so uh, now we'll start or we'll proceed uh, to the next chapter, that is the forces and moments transmitted by slender members. Okay. Forces and moments. Transmitted. by slender members. Now, first thing we should know what is slender member. Okay? So, slender member is nothing but a member for which the length of the member is much more higher than either of its cross sectional dimension. Okay. The length is much more higher than the width or your breadth. Okay. That is L and B if you consider if you consider a rectangular cross section or if you consider a square cross section. So, a, any one of the I mean either of uh, the lateral uh, or the cross sectional dimension will be much more lower than the length. Now, generally uh, it, I mean we define that it should be at least 5 times, okay. the length uh, should be at least 5 times more than the uh, cross sectional dimension. Okay. So, the classical example of this slender member is nothing but your beam, whatever you generally see in the building, then column okay. 
and then uh, you can you can think of the shaft okay the shaft which is rotating in the in some mechanical machines okay that is very slender member so these are all slender members now you can think of uh, the the aircraft uh, the wing that is also the slender member so these members the length length in the length direction it is much more higher okay as compared to the cross sectional dimension okay now for that particular type of member the slender member okay the behavior i mean what if i apply some force or moments okay how that force and externally applied forces and moments will try to develop some internal forces as well as moments okay we'll see that okay so this chapter will be dedicated to solve or to analyze this kind of slender member okay now before that let's draw one slender member so this is one typical say slender member okay say circular cross section okay so this is your say x axis this is your say y axis and this say your z axis okay this, this is one slender member so so in the length direction it is much more uh, higher than the diameter of the cross section okay so now so under the action of different external forces as well moments if i consider this is my some cut section okay internal section this is this is nothing but your x plane right if we if we see this cross section this cross section is nothing but the x plane or the x cross section right because this plane is normal to the x axis as per our previous definition so therefore what are the forces are acting so let's draw that first one is this force this force will be defined as fxx on x plane along x direction fine then you have f x plane y direction fxy then x plane z direction f xz okay these are these are probable uh, forces acting on this plane fine apart from that some internal moment will be getting uh, developed so that moment is nothing but say we are following right hand thumb rule so this will be mxx on x cross section you are having moment with respect to x axis similarly on x plane or x cross section you are having the moment with respect to y axis that will be mxy okay similarly m x z okay so these are three force components and moment components will be acting on this plane okay there is no issue now as per our definition uh, if the force if the force is acting on positive plane along positive coordinate direction or the axis direction then that force will be defined or represented as positive force now as per our definition all the force components like fxx fxy and fxz all force components whatever are shown in this particular figure all are positive in nature right okay now for moment we will consider the right hand thumb rule that means you know that right if this is the axis direction so if i if I point the thumb towards the axis direction, then whatever rotation we will be getting in the moment, that rotation or that moment will be positive. So, as per that definition, all moments are shown as positive. So, this is our sign convention we will be following. Similarly, if the forces are acting on negative plane, that means negative x plane, if you consider, okay, if the forces are acting along the negative. Uh, along 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 the negative uh, coordinate axis okay then those forces again will be positive so positive plane positive direction will be positive negative plane negative direction will be positive 
if they are reverse that means positive plane negative direction or negative plane positive direction they will be negative as per our definition already we have seen or we have defined that thing in the stress chapter when we are discussing about the concept of stress we are not going to repeat that thing again in detail okay so now this forces if you look at these forces will try to impart some kind of special behavior on the slender member now what are what what is that now, if I consider the first one f x x, okay. this if you look at this f x x, this is your x plane, this the axis of the slender member is coinciding with the x axis. Okay. So, this f x x is nothing but your axial force. Okay. And this component tends to elongate or compress the member and often and is often given as simple f x as I told you right. Uh, generally, we do not write sigma x x, sigma y y, sigma z or something like that. Instead of that, we generally write sigma x, sigma y, sigma z because we know that normal stress always will be acting on that plane on which the, uh, the uh, outward normal is along the along that particular coordinate axis. So, therefore, f x instead of writing f x x because it is quite understood the axial force will be always defined as only one subscript that is f x. So, if I get f x, so that means it is the axial force along x direction and of course, it will be it should because if this is the axial force then that should act on that particular plane that is x plane. Okay. Then coming to f x y and f x z. What is the kind of say behavior you will be getting from these forces. So, these forces are nothing but shear force right, shear force. Okay. So, these components tend to shear one part of the member relative to the adjacent part and is often given by V. Okay. So, subsequently we will be using this term V. So, whenever we will be writing V, so V capital V is nothing but the shear force. Now, what it does actually? This shear force is basically it will it will try to uh, shear one part. Say suppose if I have two parts suppose something like this if you consider okay so the i mean it is make it is say some 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 segments of the slender member the slender member is like this now shear will try to uh, move one part relative to the other part so you will be getting the shear on this plane right the shear force will be acting like that so this is very much uh, say very much present in the slender member when it will be uh, under some externally applied forces as well as moment that we will see later on. Okay. And this will uh, create or this will uh, give or this will uh, tell you that some 
some kind of uh, say adjustment or some kind of say if you if you design some concrete beam you need to put some uh, shear reinforcement for that to take care of that particular shear so so if you know the shear force then basically based on that shear force you can find out the shear stress and to take care of the shear stress you can uh, modify or revise your design so that the shear force should be taken care okay so this knowing the shear force is very very important in case of slender member okay then coming to the next part that is mxx if you see the nature of this moment what kind of say behavior it produces in the slender member mxx what does it do so this is a slender member say suppose this is this my hand is a slender member and i am applying the mxx moment like that so what it gives it gives twist right so therefore mxx is defined as twisting moment twisting moment okay or torsion popularly known as torsion it is responsible for the twisting of the member about its axis and is often given by mt okay so in the next next chapter next topic we will be covering this torsion part so in this chapter we will not be talking about torsion but however depending on the action right mxx will be giving you the twisting in the slender member the slender member will try to twist okay because of this kind of moment that is mxx okay now what about this mxy and xz what kind of behavior it provides in the slender member mxy and mxz if you look at mxy and mxz what does it do suppose this is a slender member okay if i can if i consider mx mxz is there or this side or this side whatever if, if i consider this is my positive x space so mxz as shown so this will be doing like that right okay so this is my mxz so that will provide some bending in the member okay so that's why this is known as bending moment bending moment these cause the member to bend and is often given by mb okay so what are the things we have learned axial force shear force twisting moment or the torsion and bending moment right so these three uh, these four types of force forces as well as moments will be coming on a particular slender member if I consider any particular section right. So now as I told you so these components will be uh, positive when the force and comp I mean force component or moment component acts on a positive phase along the positive axial direction okay. So that that remains same okay the sign sign convention. Now,
Now, we are going to define the sign convention for shear force. For axial force, there is no problem, right. Axial force uh, as per our definition on the positive plane along positive direction. So, suppose if I say this is one member, okay. this is the positive phase say. Okay. So, on the positive phase this is my positive phase say if this is my x direction and say the negative phase is something like this. Okay. So, this is my negative. So, on positive phase this is my positive phase positive x phase on positive x phase along positive x direction this f x is positive. Similarly, on the negative x phase the f x is acting in the negative x direction therefore, it is also positive. So, what kind of behavior or what is the nature of this force which will uh, talk about the, uh, the, the behavior of the member. So, I mean what kind of say behavior you can expect from this kind of force either elongation or compression. So, therefore, if I say the positive force that means the tensile force is positive. Okay. Similarly, compression is negative as per our definition. Okay. Now, what about the shear force? For shear force, now now onward I will be talking shear force as S f and bending moment as B m. Okay. So, shear force suppose this is as I told you the one part will be moving related to the other part of the member and say this is the direction of shear force and this direction is positive. Now, why it is positive? Say, if I say this is this is a this is my x direction, this is my say y direction. This is my positive x direction. This is my positive x plane. Okay, on positive x plane, along positive y direction, the shear force is acting. Right, the direction of this force is along y direction. So therefore, this shear force must be positive. Similarly, you try you can verify this thing on the negative plane what is happening? In the negative plane basically this V is acting on the negative plane V is acting along the negative y direction. So, therefore, that is also positive. So, this configuration is positive that means, this configuration of the shear force is positive. So, we can write what? So, V is positive okay, if it pushes the left side of the member downward okay so v is positive if it pushes the left side of the member downward. So, left side of the member is this. So, this is coming down. So, therefore, this shear force will be positive this configuration right. If you see this configuration it will be positive. If it if it goes reverse then it will be negative fine. Okay. So, similarly we can define the sign convention for the bending moment as well. So, I will stop here today. So, in the next lecture we will be defining the sign convention for the bending moment and we will take one small example uh, by which you can find out the shear force and bending moment. Okay? So, thank you very much.